Well, g'day everyone, and welcome back to another David Maxwell Golf video, where today we have the Flightscope Mevo Plus with the Titleist RC T-Balls, and I'm gonna be giving these a trial run with the Flightscope Mevo Plus, just to see what it feels like as a user to go through and use these two together, because that's what Mevo Plus is saying is gonna give you the most accurate numbers other than a metal dot. So I have three balls here. Let's go and check it out, and I'm gonna see how it goes. Alrighty guys, so for the sake of the video, it is at night time when I'm actually filming this, so I do kind of have to have the lights on, otherwise if I turn them off, I haven't got the lighting set up for it, so I do apologize for that. But next thing I just wanted to mention that if you wanted to get this package with the Flyscope Mevo Plus, the 24 seven golf simulators um, enclosure here as well, and the projector, there's gonna be a package which I'm gonna link below and in the description, which you can go and check out. Um, they have basically everything set up for you. They'll send it straight to your door and then you just set it up here like I have. So make sure you check out 24 seven golf and uh, get onto that package. All right, so it says gap wedge. It's actually my 48 degree, which is my A wedge. Let's give this a whirl. Flight's going to move plus with the RC T-Balls. Carry is 107.5 meters. It's a pretty good start. Ready. Carry 107, I didn't really get it that well. Ball speed 103. So I'm about as raw as you could possibly be. I haven't had any warm ups at all, that was it. That was much Carry nicer. Carry is 112.1 meters. Carry 112. Ball speed Ready. 103, backspin 8,000. 118, basically 8,000. So the RCT balls actually feel very much like a Pro-V1. They don't feel too much different in my opinion. Carry is 115.3 meters. 115 Ready. though, but I, I'm impressed by the flight path. I'm impressed by the visual that you get when you're hitting it here with the Flightscope Mevo Plus. And the RCT balls seem to make it a lot more responsive. Carry is 113.8 meters. 113.8. Generally, Ready. I'm about that. In between that 110 to 115 mark, anywhere there with this A wedge is pretty good. Carry is 143.8 meters. Ready. What's going on here? That's interesting. Saying the spin is 1570. Carry is 116.7 meters. Spin still is Ready. in italics though, isn't it? Carry is 114.1 meters. Carry is 111.8 meters. That's nice, that's a good Ready. one to finish on, 111, which is about that, that kind of A wedge space, anywhere there between 110 and 115. 8,600 spin, I'd say that's pretty good. Let's jump into a seven iron. So only a couple of bad reads there out of the whole lot. That's pretty good. Some still come in italics with the spin I noticed some, uh, but the majority of them don't have the italics, which is really good with the RCT balls, because at least you know that that's working. What I am interested in is seeing if this, a Callaway Chrome Soft XLS with that line, as that line spins over itself, would that help? I'm gonna try that later. All right, seven iron, let's hit some draws. See how good we get these. So my seven iron numbers generally around about 165 with a good one, 170 with a really good one. Carry is 171.0 So that's a really meters. good one to start. That's about Ready. as good as I can hit a seven iron. Ball speed 130.4, carry 171, spin 5,110. They're perfect numbers for me with a seven iron. So I'd, I'd take that every day in terms of the accuracy of the Mevo Plus there. I'd say that that's basically bang on. Carry is 167.2 meters. Ready. Again, spins 4,899. I'm 100% sure on that one. Saying that it's measured it. Doesn't look like it's in italics from here. Carry got is that one bottom me, so I got that one bottom me. I didn't hit it very well, Ready. and it's reflected here. 153, ball speeds dropped, spin again looks like that's italicized. So just from what I'm seeing with the RCT balls, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to have perfect spin readings every single time. There are still going to be spin readings that are italicized. The beauty about it is the ones that it's not sure on, it's telling you. So one more draw, and then we'll hit some fades. 
carry is 166.5 meters. So I kind of got that one in between. Ready. 166.5 meters of carry, 124 ball speed, it's not my best. All right, let's hit some fades. But that would, I think once you put those together, that would probably hit my average there, which is around about that 160, 165 mark. Let's, um, let's hit some fades, see how we go here. Carry is 164.8 meters. Beautiful little fade. Ready. 164 carry, so that's what I would use a fade for on course, is if I wanted to drop a couple of meters and still have a full swing, that's where I'm pretty much going to a fade. Carry is 167.5 meters. Yeah, just Ready. double crossed it, squared it. Carry is 160.4 nice. meters. Beautiful Ready. little peeling fade. 160 carry, 128 ball speed, spin goes up. So I would say, I would say that everything that I've absolutely seen there, everything I've absolutely seen, everything that I have seen there is absolutely spot on. I've hit a fade, the spin's gone up, the distance has dropped a little bit because the spin's gone up and I hit it pretty well because the ball speed's still at 128 mile an hour. So, ticks there. All right, so jumping into the forearm, and what about if you're playing into the wind? What if you're playing into something where you're trying to shot shake the ball, you're trying to keep it low, you're trying to practice those cuts and those draws on a really low trajectory. Can the Mevo Plus with the RCT balls actually help your skills in honing it in and practicing those shots and getting your yardages when you do them? Because when you hit a full four iron compared to a low punch draw or cut when you're trying to keep it under the wind, there's gonna be differences in carry. So can this help? Let's start with the low draw, Ready. which is actually the trickier one for me in this Instant slow draw with the four iron. Carry is 178.5 meters. About as good as I can hit a low draw Ready. with a four iron. So 178.5 carry. What you're gonna see really is not a massive difference in terms of um, extra carry compared to a seven iron, like it's 178.5. My average seven iron was probably about 165, except that's gonna roll. That's gonna keep it under the wind. If you try to do that with a seven iron, you're gonna be 30 short. Those little punch shots carrying 180 meters, which is around about 200 yards, and then probably rolling out to about 220. Perfect into the wind shots. Carry is 186.5 meters. So that's again that low Ready. bullet kind of stinger draw. I kind of pushed it a little bit, but it's still a draw. And the spin's reading it pretty bang on, I would say. Carry 186. Ball speed 135.5 mile an hour. Let's hit a cut or a fade. Carry is 172.7 oh, nice. meters. That is pretty. Ready. Okay, ball speed down a little bit. Club speed up quite a lot actually. Spin is up quite a lot as well. So, so it'll be interesting with the club speed if that actually seems to be a pattern because with a fade, you're actually pulling down with gravity, whereas with the drawer, you can kind of be dragging it through. At least, that's my interpretation of it. Someone could probably prove me wrong, but that's my interpretation of it. Keeping mode on. So what I mean by hitting a fade and that it's a, generally a faster Ready. swing speed in, in all clubs is that when you're hitting a fade, you're coming up from the outside in and you're really dropping down with gravity. Whereas with a drawer, when you're coming more from the inside, you're still coming down with, with gravity, but then you're actually dragging it through more that way, so I'm, I'm kind of pulling more than letting gravity take over. That's my take on it. Ready. Carry is 172.5 meters. Club speed is up Ready. again, but I didn't get it. That's 172, but I'm still safe, still in the fairway, still low enough. Carry is 181.1 meters. Final, and the club speed again, so 100.4 mile an hour. Uh, with a four iron, 136.2 ball speed, spin 5,172, that is italicized again, so it hadn't picked up the spin there, but we're pretty good on the carry. Now just to show you a bit of a difference, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit a four iron and get a standard height four iron, see the distance, oh, sorry, the height differential. So I'll throw it up on screen right now, get a mental picture of this height and then you'll see the difference with the standard four iron. So, now I just gotta hit a standard four iron. Ready. 
Carry is 184.4 meters. Well. Ready. I'll just hit one more. We'll probably see these last two together. Carry is 193.5 okay. meters. So I hit that one a bit better. Ready. 193 carry. All right, so what we can see, we can see the four irons here where my cursor is. So basically those four irons are the punch draws and punch cuts that I've been hitting. But then the standard four iron in, get out of the way, standard four iron in its trajectory is obviously a lot higher um, than those punch four irons. So the reason why I'm showing you that is because if you're actually wanting to practice with it to become a better golfer, to get down to scratch or plus handicaps, or you're, you're preparing for a pro tournament or something like that, this will actually really benefit you. And this is probably where a lot of the dollars come in. Now, could you do this with the Garmin R10? Absolutely. Um, this just, I think the, the user interface and the user app is probably a little bit more geared toward um, that professional golfer kind of level. So that's my take on it. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get into some average numbers, right? So gap wedge, 118 carry, seven iron, 164.5, and four iron because we had a couple of short knockers there and we we're doing some knockdowns is 178. So we might get rid of the four iron, but let's hit gap wedge and seven iron, but I'm just gonna name them differently. Um, and I'm gonna do that with a Callaway ball. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hit the same clubs, the gap wedge and the seven iron, but I'm just gonna label them pitching wedge and six iron. And I'm gonna use the Callaway Chrome Soft XLS with that line. And I'm gonna see if that line, if I have it sideways, actually, detects it with the Flightscape Mevo Plus on their spin rates and if I can get the same average numbers or whether you must have a dot or an RCT ball with the Flightscape Mevo Plus. Carry is 108.3 meters. Spins in italics. Carry is 108. Ready. That's not too bad. I'll put that line down square again. Carry is 126.0 I mean, meters. I definitely hit that one harder but Ready. 128 is a bit of a stretch. Carry is 110.0 meters. 110. Ready. Carry is 115.3 meters. 115. Ready. The spin is definitely still italicized, so doesn't seem to be picking up the spin, but the carry distance does seem to be pretty close. Carry is 114.2 meters. 114, 6,850. I think the spin's a little low. Let's jump into the seven iron. And I'm gonna do the same thing again, just line it up sideways. Hopefully with that line going across, it's gonna help. Carry is 166.8 166, meters. 130 ball speed, Ready. spin 6,000. That's a pretty good read, honestly. Carry is 160.6 meters. 160. Ready. I think that's a bit short because the spin's up. Carry is 165.9 meters. Ready. 5,900. It's very consistent. 165.9 and 5,900 spin. So even though the spin is italicized, we're still seeing actually some pretty good carry numbers, which isn't what I saw the other day when I filmed the last video. Let's do one last one. Carry is 166.6 meters. Up. Ready. That is insane. Look at all of those four shots. I mean, I mean, let's like, they're just on a rope. Boom. How awesome is that? So when we're taking a look at the summary here, basically it's a pitching wedge and the seven iron that we're gonna be comparing with the RCT ball versus the standard ball with the Mevo Plus. So basically you have gap wedge distance there. The pitching wedge is a gap wedge. It's five meters shorter um, and you're gaining another thousand, well, sorry, 600 RPMs of spin. Ball speed is slightly off. That could have been strike, but the five meters is quite a big difference. Um, with the wedge, with the seven iron though, so six iron and seven iron, we are literally very, very close. I was gonna say identical, but then I just took a look and we're not. So you've got the same carry, 
the same club speed thereabouts. Um, interestingly, actually, if you look at the pitching wedge and gap wedge again, sorry, the uh, club speed is like three mile an hour difference. And we're five meters shorter. Yeah, that's a bit of a concern. That's quite a lot of difference, actually. Um, but the six and seven iron is pretty similar. Launch is identical. Spin rates are 700 RPMs. It's not measuring the spin there. It's, uh, it's you know, every one of those shots was italicized, I'm pretty sure. And smash was better um, without the RCT ball. So, so guys, are you gonna get accurate numbers without using the RCT ball when you're using the FlightScope Mevo Plus? Well, the answer is, is not as simple as you might think. You could, but you also couldn't. And that makes it really tricky. See, as long as the, the spin numbers are italicized with the Mevo Plus and you're using the RCT, you can delete those shots out and you know that what you're left with is accurate numbers. But when you're not using the RCT ball or a metal dot and you're just using a standard ball, pretty much any number could be wrong when it comes to spin. And then you've got to delete the ones that you think might be right, the ones that you think might be wrong, and then you're kind of manipulating the numbers just to suit whatever you want anyway, which kind of defeats the purpose of finding your numbers. Anyway, guys, look, that's my take on it. The Flightscope Mevo Plus with the RCT balls against the standard ball. Also, like I said, make sure you check out 24-7 Golf on their home simulator setups like I have here. They're absolutely amazing. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next video. If you haven't already, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and I'll get back to you on the comments section. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you on the next video.